Hey everyone, Terrence here with RCCAD to VR. I just wanted to give you guys an update on the status of the L1011 build. Now, as everyone that's following this channel knows, my videos are spaced out really far apart and there's a lot of reasons for that and I kind of wanted to demystify some of that and tell you what's going on. So the first thing is the design of the plane is pretty much done and all of the parts are cut. But there are a couple of things that have recently occurred that have slowed things down, which is actually requiring me to go back to the design and reevaluating things. For example, the supply of Baltic birch in the United States is dwindling uh, because of the conflict in Eastern Europe. And so that means that the material that I've been building out of is becoming more and more expensive. Now, the effect of that is a more expensive kit, which is something I'm really trying to not have happen. So I started exploring um, different materials. The material that I landed on is poplar, which is sustainable and available here in the United States. There is some upside and some downside to poplar. The first upside is it's considerably lighter than birch, um, but it is also a less sturdy material. To give you an example, this right here is a uh, pylon that goes into the engine nacelle. Now, when I try to bend this, you can see it's pretty sturdy, right? But here is the comparable part. This one is made out of poplar and you can see just how flexible that is. So that's not a necessarily a bad thing because this can be solved by changing the orientation of the grain when it's in the cutter. But there are several knock-on effects to that, which are because all of that changes the nesting properties and how these parts actually need to be laid out on the sheets of plywood. Whereas before it wasn't so much an issue. So that means all of the designs have to go through an entirely new nesting process. And once that's done, all of the parts that need to be completely renumbered because it is a manual process. It's basically going from Fusion 360, getting the part number, then going into light burn, and then copying that, that part number onto the part. You do that over and over and over again for what seems to be hours. Now, the other thing that makes this project take so long is because this is going to be a kit, every single part needs to be accounted for. It's not like a one-off where I can just build something and then ta-da, I've got a plane. No, I need to make sure that every single part, I know the cost, the material, how long it takes to produce, and also everything has to be completely reproducible. So that way everybody that gets a kit is getting the exact same parts and the same quality. That means when you're talking about things like this, which is part of a flap, the settings required for that need to be dialed in perfectly for that exact piece. Every piece is different and everyone has slightly different settings that need to be done in order to always get the right and perfect print, for example. So those are things that slow things down. Another thing is when I'm creating these models, the other thing that I need to do is think about the assembly and the, the order in which these things get assembled. So if I make a change to a part, for instance, there are knock-on effects to the assembly and the assembly order to that, potentially, not always, but potentially. Now that also means that the documentation and the instructions on how you actually build the model also changes. That means if I create the model and then I create the manual to build the model and then in the build process something doesn't fit or something isn't right or something needs to be redesigned, the entire manual is pretty much void at that point and all of the drawings have to be redone all of the parts need to be reaccounted for, and then the assembly manual has to be rewritten again. So for those reasons, that is why this project is taking so long. I wish it could go faster, but 
I don't want to put out a bad product and I want everybody to be able to build this plane if they want to build this plane. I'm doing my very best to keep the cost down as low as I can uh, to allow for entry level. Uh, of course, you can go all the way up to almost ready to fly or commissioned, obviously. Uh, which is an entirely different price category. But those are the things that I'm up against. But I'm happy to report that pretty much everything is locked in. I'm just trying to solve the material problem with between the birch and the poplar. I'm almost through that part. The next video, which is in the works, has been in the works, which uh, those of you that follow already know that, is the building of the wings. Now, if you look back here, that is the first prototype wing that I built and I learned a lot from that and a lot of changes were made. And so I've been in the process of getting everything built for the next build video. Since I'm still in the production period, I'm thinking about narrating the next video. So previously I've done basically montage style videos, but I'm thinking about doing narration. If you think I should narrate the next video, please let me know in the comments. I love your feedback. Um, it reminds me that I'm not just by myself in the studio and behind the computer all the time doing this by myself, that there are people out there that are just as enthusiastic and excited about this project. So anyway, that's the update. That's what's going on. It's not too much longer. I'm doing my best to make sure that this plane flies this spring it's getting a little bit tight, still possible, and kits I'm trying to get out before this fall, ready for build season. Thank you very much for following along, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you.